Welcome to this continuation of our lecture about descriptive statistics. In this part of the descriptive statistics module, we're going to be looking at ways to work with uh, data that uh, is in frequencies, grouped data, categorical data, uh, getting summary measures, and looking at graphical approaches. Let's start by taking a quick look at a problem we've seen before. Uh, at the beginning of our um, lecture on descriptive statistics, when we were still focused on uh, measures of location, we looked at this example of reading level. Um, a random sample of 16 eighth graders in a particular school were tested and they showed reading levels from uh, five, meaning fifth grade, uh, through ninth grade and tenth grade. So some of some of them um, were above, some of them were below their grade level. And the solution we found then is listed for you here. I'm not going to belabor it. We did it already. Uh, you order the data and you get uh, the the uh, location statistics, the measures of central location and the measures of non-central location. Now the previous problem actually can be set up somewhat differently. And you're going to like it better this way as a frequency distribution. Notice you have a 5, a 6, a 7, a 8, a 9, and a 10. And now we show the frequencies. Okay, 5 showed up twice. The 6 showed up three times. The 7 showed up three times. The 8 showed up twice. The 9 showed up five times and the 10 showed up once. You can see why we call it a frequency distribution. All right, and it's also called group data. We're grouping it. Okay, so we're grouping the data to make it a lot easier to work with, especially when you have a huge data set. Okay, here we only have 16 observations. That's why you can ungroup it. It's only 16 separate numbers. But again, with a big data set, you want to group it. Okay, now let's see it. We've grouped it now. We're only looking at six different values, right? We're looking at reading levels from five all the way up to 10. Notice the important thing to recognize is the sum of the frequencies. Add up all the frequencies, you got the N. So we sum them. Two plus three plus three plus two plus five plus one, 16. That's N. We had 16 numbers, okay? So N is the sum of the frequencies. Now the mode, you can see it immediately. Mode is the one that occurred most often. Which value came most often? Okay. Notice that um, that the, the the highest frequency for the nine is five. The nine showed up five times. Okay. That's your mode. Now you know nine is the mode. Okay. And again, remember all your values, all your measures, actually the x's. You call them the X's, the measurements. They're basically the values of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So your mean has to be between the 5 and the 10. Same thing. The median will also be between 5 and 10. Your mode will be one of those values. Okay, now we figured out the mode is 9. We can see it. That had the highest frequency. Now the median has to be somewhere in the middle. Since N is 16, it's going to be kind of right. Think of the eighth value. It's already grouped uh, and ordered. It's ordered for you. Okay, so we have 16 values. It's got to be the eighth number. Okay, think of the number that cuts the. So you have eight above and eight below. Count down eight numbers. Look at using the frequencies. Two, three, three. Notice the eighth value. The last of the the eighth value is a seven, right? In fact, if you go backwards and you go 1, 5, 2 in the frequencies, you'll see that the last value was an 8. You have 8 above and 8 below, and you go right in the middle between 7 and 8. So we know the median, just, observe, just by looking at it, is right between the 7 and the 8, which is 7.5. So your median is going to be 7.5. Okay, that makes things a lot easier when you set it up this way.
Okay, let's compute the mean for group data. Okay, the formula is right there on the bottom. The sample mean is the sum of the xi times its frequency divided by n. Okay, so in other words, what you have to do now is have a new column called xi fi. All right, so we have 5 times 2, which is essentially the same as saying I had two fives, I'm adding them up. 5 plus 5. Instead of doing 5 plus 5, I say two fives is 5 times 2, it's 10. There were three sixes, which is another way of saying 6 plus 6 plus 6, that's 18. 7 times 3, the three sevens, that adds up to 21. 7 plus 7 plus 7. 8 times 2 is 16. 5 9s, 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, or 45. And 10 times 1 is 10. If you add up that last column, the sum of the xi, fi, you get 120. That's the same you get as you would get if you ungroup the data and add up the 16 numbers you started with. But again, you don't have to do this that way. Get the sum, the column of sum of xi, fi, which is 120, divided by the sum of the frequencies n, which was 16. 120 over 16 is 7.5. And 7.5 now is the sample mean. That's your average reading level. Okay, let's look at this problem. Okay, now here we have a thousand values, right? The sum of the frequencies is a thousand. That means n is a thousand. Again, you're not going to want to write this ungrouped, which means you have to write out a thousand numbers. Okay, so now first of all, you know n is a thousand, the first thing you note. Then you do the uh, third column, the xi fi column. Zero times 10 is zero. One times 20 is 20. Two times 30 is 60. Three times 40 is 120. And eventually you'll get to 10 times 100 is 1,000. You add up the last column, which is 5,960 absences. And that's the total number of absences for the 1,000 people working in the company. All right? So if you want to get the mean, all you got to do is divide 5960 over 1,000. And the mean is going to be 5.96. Okay, now let's get the median. And then we'll do Q1 and Q3. Now, the median is kind of the middle value when you order the data. The data is already ordered for us. It goes from lowest, 0, to the highest, 10. Okay, we have 1,000 observations. So it's going to be the middle value by the 500 mark. All right, so think about going down 500 in frequency. Okay, so we have 10, that's our first frequency for the zero, plus 20 is 30, we're not yet at 500. Another 30 is 60. By the time we finish the last three, we've had 100 values. We've used up 100 values. We go to the uh, four now, we have another 50, so it's 150. 150 values have been used up. Okay, now the fives, can't go past that, because that's 400. 450 is 550. We want to get to the 500th value. So somewhere in the fives, somewhere in one of those fives, okay, that's going to be the median. So the median is five absences. And as a check, you can go in the other direction. Go backwards, go up 500. 100 plus 100 is 200, plus 60 and 40 is 300, plus 150. So now we have 450 values. Going up, we have to go up 50 now. And guess what? We're again in the fives. So that's two ways of getting the median. You go up, or you go down, and then you get the median. Now the mode is just, you can just look at it and you find the mode. The mode is a five. That has the highest frequency, 400. So I've shown you how to get the median. I've shown you how to get the mode. We did the mean already. Now let's try to get Q1 and Q3. You do the same thing, but now you're counting down. For Q1, you count down 250 observations. Again, only using the frequency um, column. Count down 250. 10 plus 20, that's 30. 30 and 30 is 60. 60 and 40 is 100. 50 is 150. Now you want 250, you're going to be somewhere in those fives. One of those fives will be your Q1. So Q1 is five absences. You want to get to Q3, do the same thing. A quarter of a thousand is 250. Count, go backwards. Go to the other, from the other direction, from the starting in the bottom, 10. Okay, you get 100 and 100 is 200. If you go past the eights, you'll have 60. So somewhere in those eights, one of those eights is going to be Q3. So now you found that Q1 is five absences. Q3 is eight absences. Again, to get a median, you just take your N, the sum of the frequencies, cut it in half. 
half of it, like in this case it was 500, and then you can go up or down the frequency table and you'll get uh, the median. If you want to get Q1, you take a quarter of M, which is 250. Starting from the lowest number, go, go count 250, you get to Q1. Starting from the bottom, the highest number, go backwards, go upwards, and then you'll get Q3 after you count 250. And again, the interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1, which we're going to learn about, and that's just uh, eight absences minus five absences or three absences. Okay, here's another problem with group data. We're looking at defects and the frequency of these defects. So we're an automobile manufacturer, and we see that you know 10 cars had one defect. 10 cars had two defects, all the way up to 20 cars had 10 defects. Okay, so essentially, if you look at the sum of the frequencies, you'll note right away that the sample size was 350 cars. Just add up the frequencies, 10 plus 10 plus 20 plus 20, all the way up to the last 20, and that's 350. So the sum of the frequencies, N, is 350. Notice that the total number of uh, defects is 2,290. That's the total number of defects. Just adding the last column, some of the XI, FI. Okay, 10 times 1 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60, 20 times 4 is 80, 40 times 5 is 200, until you get to the last one, 20 times 10 is 200, and now we know that the total number of defects is 2290. And on the next slide, we'll go through the statistics. The mean, okay, that's just 2290 over 350, so the uh, average number of defects is 6.54. You want to go to two decimal places. Okay? Always remember the sum of the frequencies is n, that's your sample size. Okay, now the median. Now remember, we have, we're looking at n of 350. There were 350 cars. Okay? So we have to basically, you know, for a median, take half of 350. Okay? It's already ordered. So we got to go down essentially half of 350 which is 175. So let's go down 175 using only the frequencies column. Okay, go down 10 plus 10 plus 20, that's 40, plus 20 is 60, plus 40 is 100, plus 50 is 150. Now in the seven somewhere, we gotta go down to 175. All right, so, get, so we know somewhere in the sevens, that's seven defects, somewhere in seven defects, is going to be our median. If you want to check your answer, go backwards 175. We're starting now all the way to the bottom. 20 plus 50 is 70, plus 60 is 130. Again, we see we just go up a little bit, and somewhere in those sevens is our median. So the median is seven defects. You want to get Q1 and Q3? Well, you got to take a quarter of 350. Okay, so you need a quarter of 350, and that's, as you know, um, is roughly, it's 87.5, all right, so around 88, okay, 87 and a half. So let's go down 87.5, and that'll get us to Q1, and then we'll go from the other direction, going upwards, we'll do the same thing to get Q3. Okay, now we got to go down 87.5, so 10 plus 10 is 20, 20, and 20 is 40, then we have 60, and notice in the 5 somewhere is we're going to have the 87.5 observation. So Q1 is 5 defects. Do the same thing going backwards. Okay, let's start from the bottom. We want to go up 87.5. No, 20 plus 50 is 70. It's in the 8s. I can see right away. You can't go beyond that because then you'll have 130. Okay, so somewhere in the 8s is Q3. So Q1 is 5 defects. Q3 is 8 defects. And the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1 is three defects. So far, we have seen discrete group data that has been uh, organized, collected into a frequency distribution where you have uh, the number of observations that fell into each class. What can we use this for? Well, we've already seen uh, using frequency distribution for numerical data with repeated observations, which is another way of saying discrete group data. 
we could also use it for any quantitative data that has been grouped, um, even if the groups didn't come naturally, uh, like co collecting um, income data and organizing it by tens of thousands, let's say. Um, and it could also obviously, uh, for the same reason, be used for categorical data. In fact, we don't really have very many other options for categorical data besides frequencies and percentages, where you can have a frequency distribution, you can have a percentage distribution, and we'll see about that soon. Here's a quick example to show what we can do with frequency distributions other than just get the summary statistics like we got before. Uh, in this problem, a sample was taken of 200 professors, um, and we asked each for take-home weekly salary. Uh, the responses ranged from $520 a week to $590 a week. And remember, the sample size was 200. Um, in this case, we have numeric data, quantitative data. Uh, we did not need to uh, use a classification technique. But sometimes you do because it gives you more insight into your data. In this case, we had to collapse it by creating intervals that didn't really um, come naturally to the data. We just had to decide. We, I, guess, uh, I guess we decided here uh, that we wanted seven categories. Uh, the range was 520 to 590. Um, that's $70 divided by seven, $10 per category. So um, you can see the categories 520 and un under, and, and under 530. There were uh, six, uh, six of those. Um, so we don't have individual values, but we don't need them in this case. And six out of 200 is three, so it's, that's 3% of the total. Um, and that goes all the way through. You have the seven categories. You have the intervals, uh, the frequency, and the percentage. That's the uh, frequency and slash uh, percentage distribution in the top chart. Um, then we took this and created a cumulative distribution from it. You've seen this before. You know what these look like. Um, basically, what this is, is as you go along, you don't look at individual categories. You keep adding to the category that came before. Um, so if the first category uh, that we used, the classification was 520 and under 530, and there were six of them, um, that's 520 to 530. So under 530, uh, le less than uh, or equal to 530, there were six observations. Uh, less than 520, there were zero observations. Less than 540, how many were there? Well, the six from the under 530 and the 30 from 530 to 540, so altogether 36. And for each of those, there's a percentage too. It's the cumulative percentage distribution. And when you get all the way to the bottom, the final category, since you're accumulating everything up, has to be equal to the sample size. So all 200 observations were below 590, which we knew to start out. Uh, and that's 100% of the distribution. Over the next few slides, we're going to look at some uh, graphical approaches to um, grouped data, uh, taking frequency data or percentage data and looking, seeing what the graph would look like, uh, the chart, a graph, a chart, a bar chart. There are other ways of doing it. We're just looking at a selection here. All right, you can create a, a histogram, uh, kind of a bar chart from the frequency distribution. In this case, it's a vertical bar chart. Uh, across the x-axis are the categories, the intervals, um, and they're discrete intervals. They're non-overlapping, and that's why it looks like bars. Um, we, we do not have uh, regular quantitative data. This data has been collapsed into intervals. So you don't see a smooth, continuous curve. Uh, the height, the y-axis, is the frequency. And uh, you see that sometimes 
the individual uh, frequency for each interval is, is written uh, on the top of each bar for clarity. A frequency polygon uh, is another way of portraying the frequency uh, histogram. It's not a curve, although it looks like a curve. Um, it's actually this, the frequency histogram, imagine it overlaid on a histogram. Uh, the way it's constructed is simply by putting a point at the top center of each uh, bar and then connecting the dots. So you could see how, how that was done. Here's a, a graph of the cumulative frequency distribution with this data. You saw the cumulative frequency distribution on a previous slide. Um, and this does look like a smoother curve, even though it's not based on purely quantitative data, but on uh, categorical data, data that was in uh, categories and classification. Um, the interesting thing about this, and you'll see this uh, more later in this course and in other courses, is the S-shaped curve, which is typical of, um, con of continuous uh, distributions that are based on distributions which have their mass in the center and are more or less symmetric, and then on either side going down towards uh, zero at the extremes. Uh, you can see how it's at the left side, it starts out slow uh, where the smaller frequencies were, and then in the middle, where the mass of the distribution is, it jumps because that's, that's where the higher frequencies are. And then it peters out again at the end, at the right, uh, again, where the smaller frequencies are. So it's a, there's a typical S-shaped curve uh, for certain uh, very, very uh, frequently used cumulative uh, distributions, including uh, one that we're going to study very, very much, uh, it, it, we're very involved in uh, most of the semester, and that's the normal distribution. This uh, descriptive topic, uh, even though it's at the beginning of the course and relatively easy, uh, it ended up being a bit longer altogether than uh, what you might expect. There's a lot in there. It's descriptive statistics, and it's a these are large, large part of what we do is descriptive statistics. Um, don't forget, a little bit of, of shameless reminder here: you must do your homework if you're if you're in this course to learn, or if you're in this course to do well on your exams. The answer is the same: you have to get find as many problems as you possibly can. And practice, 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 and what comes out is a happy, smiling student.